the thing about the Spitfire that was so useful in combat was its maneuverability. Invariably in a fight, you're chasing each other round and round and round, but you could turn much more tight and a smaller turning circle than any German fighter, especially the 109. And uh, that was the, 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 her best feature, by far. The 109 was a pretty good aeroplane. It was almost on a par with the Spitfire, same speed. It had one advantage over the Spitfire, it could get higher. And we always were at a disadvantage. Every time we met them, they were higher than we were. And of course, that's always an advantage. But nevertheless, they had to come down to our level because otherwise they were failing in their duty to defend the bombers that they were supposed to look after. So they had to come down to our level. And the form was, you simply, uh, you had three blokes behind your squadron searching the sky constantly for these people. And as soon as they were sighted, we turned into them and flew straight at them. The German pilots, when we first met them, in, uh, was over Dunkirk, and they were very, very good. But it was so obvious towards the end of the, of the, the battle that these were not the same chaps at all. They were, they, they hadn't the skill, they certainly hadn't the perseverance, or guts, if you like to call it that. It was most noticeable. Then you got into a fight and they immediately used to put the aircraft into a dive and go screaming for, for France. And uh, the, uh, their morale must have been absolutely rock bottom because they were getting a pasting every time they came over. If we hadn't had the Spitfire during 1940, uh, then I think it would have been very, very bad. Uh, in fact, I think we'd have lost the war. I'm sure we would. You will not find a Spitfire pilot can criticise in any shape or form the Spitfire. I've never met one. They, they, she really was the perfect flying machine. <laughs>